Okay, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed time with Troy. And the next guy is a guy that, that you all probably know. It's Norm Ferrer. Hi, Norm. Hey, how are you? I'm pretty well. How about you? Good, thanks. So for those that don't know, Norm, can you, can you tell us more about yourself and like what things that you do? Like we're in Europe here, like based in Belgrade, Serbia, and I'm pretty sure that you're well, well known in the US, like 100% and like, but like maybe you would like to introduce yourself to, to European audience as well. Yeah, sure. So uh, just a little bit uh, about my background. I uh, was into uh, online marketing back in 19, around 1995 was my first website. Um, I just got into that by a fluke. Um, ended up being very involved with manufacturing. Um, my parents or my father was into manufacturing and I kind of followed along. We ended up going into business together and opening up um, a facility, two facilities in Taiwan. This is back about 20 years ago. I got into specialty packaging, um, warehousing, a little bit of everything. Um, even got into uh, a tech incubator in Tampa uh, about 10, 15 years ago. But uh, Amazon came around and that was, everything sort of came around that. Everything I knew about e-com, warehousing, everything I needed to know uh, was there. So that was, that was, that got me into where I am now and then today, uh, I do a lot of um, managed uh, managed account um, services for clients. I have a sourcing um, and logistics company called Honu um, and a press release uh, company that I own with um, Shane Aglo, which does press releases and public relations and content managing. And just recently, the newest venture is with Paul Barron and Shane and Jason Ayers. Uh, and that's uh, a chat, it's the chat agency but it's got a different swing to it. Okay. This is, and this, this is an unveiling for your audience. <laughs> okay, so guys, doing, listen to this one. Get this. We are going to be doing profitable launches without rebates. Okay. <laughs> profitable launches without rebates. So, so you can you, you have my attention money. here. You can make money uh, off of a launch. And this is, uh, I mean, Paul's the brains behind it. Um, so it's something, it's actually patent pending. And it's a, a system that he's developed over the years. Um, and it also brings in influencers and brand ambassadors. So as you're building, you're getting this group that you can use for Amazon Post, Amazon Live, all your social media, but you're getting people promoting your product for free. Okay, that, that, that's F-R-E-E. -E. <laughs> so we're okay. just unveiling it now. We've, we're really, we're just, we're in beta. Um, Paul's been using this for quite some time. And um, we're gonna be, you're gonna be hearing a lot more about it. It's called the chat agency. And uh, again, it's, we still like using um, rebates. We, we love rebates, but, uh, the majority of what we're going to be doing is, okay, we can start with a few rebates to get the sales velocity and carry it over with profitable, and it will show you from day one, profitable launches. Oh, wow. Yeah. So th that sounds really good. So where do you sign? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, you should be a beta tester. <laughs> that, that, that sounds really, really, really good. Like so, for those that, that don't know, I'm I, I I met Norm basically because first I I went with with uh, Shane to uh, an event and he told me like oh I have a really good partner he's like a really awesome guy and I was like okay and he started talking about you and like I finally met you uh, in February this year yeah and during the event and like both of us were were in, like women in power power. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and and and. Basically, that's it. So, yeah, and and I'll, I'm so grateful that that you're here with us, especially because like uh, we screwed up your time a couple of times for <laughs> for your. I didn't know if it was me or you. <laughs> no, it it was probably me because to be honest, like we never did any live streaming before, like five minutes streaming, 
and like we're PPC agency, we don't do this kind of stuff, you know. Like we 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 do have a podcast that is like PPC only podcast, and it's like super nerdy podcast. Like I I I'm I'm like free to say it's super boring. Like it's really boring. Like it's it's PPC only basically. It's numbers. Like like who likes that? So <laughs> so yeah we we started with this live stream and it's 48 hour live stream and it's like if we're going to do it we're going to do a 48 hour live stream because i i never saw anybody doing it so why not yeah it is i i'm finally realizing it's crazy because <laughs> now it's the 11th hour since we started and like to be honest it's fun it's so much fun and like we have like I don't know if, if you had a chance to see let me let me like share this part like you can see like part of our offices in Belgrade like we we keep the social distance and like don't get me wrong team is not working like 48 hours straight like they go home they have their own lives you know they're like I, I don't have a whip and that kind of stuff and that's like super hard to explain that that's the thing that I want to like highlight once again so uh, it's it, we have a 40 team member team here in Belgrade, so like we were switching and so on so right yeah uh, so obviously it's a huge day for us and like for everybody on amazon it's prime day and like we didn't even know that if we were going to have it and like uh, it, it came all of a sudden and unexpectedly like everybody talked like maybe it's going to happen but like after everything that happened and like after having like prime day time we, without being able to even send units to amazon like we have prime day now like what 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 what's what's your like takeaway from all that like what, what do you think about everything that is going on here well the people and it usually will be the same thing with black friday but we heard that october was going to be possible and the people who planned ahead and got the inventory in, I think they're going to make out, you know, a fine here. Um, but usually what's happening is there's a lot of people that will wait to the last minute. And then all of a sudden, what's happening right now? Um, items are being, uh, well, not misshipped, but uh, receiving. Receiving is being late, you know, coming into Amazon. We're actually, like, for me, if I'm looking ahead, I mean, product should be coming in there for Black, Black Friday. And literally last week I had people shipping in stuff for Prime Day. You know, that inventory should have probably already been somewhat there. Um, one of the things that, and this is good for Black Friday, is with the IPI restrictions or if you get a new product, you really want to make sure that you're, you, you have a strategy where you can just, you know, move, start moving that product so your restrictions start to move up and that you can get more and more inventory in place for Black Friday. But if you don't, and if you can't have that inventory in place, you've got to make sure that you have the two listings, right? FBA and FBN turned on so that you can continue it. Now, I was talking, um, Tim Jordan was on my podcast mm -hmm. yesterday. And uh, he, yeah, he was talking about um, uh, the way that his strategy works is that he'll have the exact the exact cost of FBA for your FBM. He does not charge any extra. He'll take the hit to keep the sales velocity going. So that's interesting. And like one of the things I was mentioning um, uh, that we do is we will offer an expedited freight and that'll be a little bit extra, um, but we will publish the same price as well. So it's a really great tip because you know you, people will be buying your products um but if it's an extra you know few bucks right off the top they might look at somebody else one of the things that i talked with troy that was previous guest and was like uh it, it, it was a common sense always to have fba because mm. of the all of the positive stuff that you get with fba like keyword ranking and so on because obviously you're getting extra cash to to amazon and so on like do you feel that FBM is still like somewhere behind FBA or like, is it like a good option to have apart from like current situation? I, if you were to ask me a couple of months ago, it was a whole different answer, but I think Amazon stepped up to the plate 
because they've moved out all this inventory and they're trying to get, you know, all this inventory in being received right now. And they know that there's issues. I think they're treating FBM and I have no proof of this, but all I know is that some of the product that I've seen, at least with the brands I'm managing, um, seem to have more um, promotional benefit with FBM. Now, not with more FBM. than FBA. Yeah, FBA um, still, I think, is the best. They give you the most weight. It's most more weighted. But it used to be you'd be buried in the back. Um, now, you 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 know, you do get promotion with FBM. And again, I have no, I don't know what the ratio is. Um, it just seems to be um, it's a lot better now than it was five months ago. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And like since you mentioned that, that you're launching a new service, that is for product launches. How crazy it is to launch a product in Q4, especially during like these months and like these dates. Well, I try to stay away from Prime Day, <laughs> and, I stay away, <laughs> and I try to stay away from Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Uh, but um, just to give you an example, last year we launched um, uh, a really beautiful um, knife. October. It was supposed to come in in November. Um, and it didn't, it was supposed to be November the 1st. It came in on the 13th of December, not great, you know, but we were able to do a launch. Um, we gave some product away. Um, we did some, uh, some, re uh, press releases. We did some PPC anyways, we ended up just killing it. The knife, um, uh, we started out at a smaller rate. It was 79, it was actually 49 99, went to 79, ended up at 97. And oh, wow. over, over uh, about a month, uh, we sold about $65,000 worth of these knives. So could it be like, it could be, a, it could be awesome a launch right now because you're getting a lot of traffic, but if you're doing it during um, Black Friday or Cyber Monday, uh, it's really tough. Plus you get a lot of crap um, information too. So, you know, you don't know, like the information that you're getting um, during that launch, it's not sustainable. It's not good information. So that's got to be kind of tossed out the window and you kind of got to start fresh the next week, um, at least in my opinion. Um, so it is tough. I, I would wait the week. I would suppress the listing um, and then start it fresh. Now, fourth quarter going into January 15th, um, that's my fourth quarter. Uh, because uh, I find that there's a lot of sales that happen after Christmas right through to January 15th. Um, at least the last two or three years in a row, after January 15th, sales started to decline. And um, I've heard and I believe that it's because of dis uh, gift cards. Gift cards are being used over that period of time, and then they start to fall off. Yeah, from my perspective, as, uh, like as an agency, uh, like what we see is like apart from supplements, like new, new year, new me, and that kind of stuff. Like uh, because of the Christmas gifts, like what people are getting for Christmas, like accessories for that kind of stuff. Like especially if you're, I don't know, Nintendo Switch or like video games or bunch of stuff that you that that are really good gifts for for Christmas. Like day after Christmas, like you you see a huge pick in sales for their for the accessories for them, and that's something that people don't don't usually think about. And like first time when 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 I saw that kind of stuff, I was like, what's going on here? And they're like, what's well, it's pretty obvious. The guy got the present, and now he wants to like improve it even more. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and you know it, it's interesting because uh, with posts right now, um, you can target that. So, and, and you'll see this in the rel uh, relevant categories that they'll show. But you can show your product with, like, let's take an HDMI cable, working with a gaming system, working with a TV, working with this, working with that, and you could you could target those in your posts, and it'll go you know wherever it gets showed up, any of your competition. But if you start throwing those images and people start seeing that chances of them, you know, um, um, 
thinking of your product with the gaming system, your product with Nintendo or whatever it is, um, you can get those extra sales. And especially like on the PPC side, you're like for targeting, like for us with um, HDMI cables, well, if we could target somebody who's going to be buying a TV or buying a computer or buying a gaming system, whatever it is, that's where we'd be targeting our ads, you know, not against other HDMI cables. Literally what we're doing, like, I can tell you our perspective for it. Like, I always try to think of, like, the world without internet. And imagine, like, going to Best Buy in that case. And you want to buy a TV. Like, there are two options that you're going to end up with. Like, you want to buy a TV, you come to the guy that sells TVs there and tell him, like, I want this this size and everything. Like, you give him information, like, what you want to get. And he tries to do an upsell there. He's telling you, like, maybe you would like a bigger one or, like, with more features or so on. And, like, you're like, no, no, no. I want this specific model. And, like, okay, what's the next thing that he's trying to do? He's trying to sell you soundbar or HDMI cable. He's yep. trying to do cross-sale. So that's something that we, we do a lot, especially with for uh, with ASIN targeting campaigns, like all the variations that you can do with, with ASIN targeting. We not only that, like, as you said, like you don't always want to target other HDMIs just because you're selling HDMI. Try to, to, to sell your HDMI to something that is relevant and you want to buy HDMI with. And that, that's, yeah. that's the whole point. And, and the other is, part is if you find an HDMI company, let's say that they sell a three foot, a six foot, a 10 foot, but you sell a 15, 25, 35, you can then go against that company and try to pick up those sales because people might be wanting a different size. But uh, yeah, it's just kind of thinking a little bit outside the box. And like you said, you know, if you go to Best Buy, what are you going to buy with that TV? Exactly, exactly. And that's one of the things like when it, when one of the strategies like apart from like for display ads when, where you have titles and headlines, like what you want to do, you want to like what we like test all the time is like we try to check reviews, like what people are writing about the products and you can like it's amazing what people write and it's not always the thing that is um, like in, in your mind when you're a seller of the product, like we, we were um, checking some, some markers like for writing on like boards and like people use them for like coloring like furniture because like it was crashed and that kind of stuff. And, and like create an ad with that kind of stuff and use keywords like that and see what's going to happen. And and that's going to be like completely different thing. Or um, use use some titles as you said. Like <laughs> our cable is bigger than theirs. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Cable envy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like make it polite, but that's yeah. the whole point. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> so yeah, that, that's absolutely like a good way how to how to think outside of the box because everybody else is like cross targeting other products from the niche and like waiting to see what's going to happen. Yeah. And the other and way to cross there's a couple of other really good um options that Amazon this year has provided and one of them are posts. So, you know, we can do cross selling through posts now with the multiple images that you can put on. So you can create a carousel within a within a post. So it, let's take a look. Um, it could be the HDMI cables. It could be like a knife. So you've got different styles of knives. Uh, it could be almost anything. The other part that um, I'm liking is it's the virtual bundles where you can take somebody else's product and all of a sudden there's an HDMI, HDMI cable. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to do together and combine. Yeah. I, so I feel like because Amazon is giving you so many options now, like comparing to like three years ago, like you can do so many new things that like nobody else is doing. Yeah. And and like there are so many options just to, 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 to be above others, just, just because you're more creative. And at, at, at this point with so many options, like basic stuff, everybody's doing it now. But like for this kind of stuff, like you need to sit and like, 
take an hour a day and like think of like what's the next thing that I'm going to do that is going to make me different from the other guys that are selling the same product or like something similar to my product because like knife is a knife but like me as a buyer that don't know like why is your knife that better but you need to explain me why I should take your knife instead of somebody else's yeah and you know it's going to be that person that that is doing all of this, like I, I just call it a blitz, right? When you're getting all this information coming in and, you know, again, going, we talked about influencers at the beginning, but if you've got a group of influencers who are providing images, so you're constantly putting stuff onto, um, uh, it could be posts. And then you ask those imagers or brand ambassadors to give you image or um, a video. And they put that on um, Amazon live. Now you've got, and I don't know if you've seen this, but they have a follow button. So you can build your brand community Audience. on posts and on uh, Amazon Live, and you've got your community. So if you're going live or if you're doing a post, they get a message. Um, it's really a great way to start building out a group to buy your product. Anytime you need a new product release or whatever. And it's really cool. You don't have to, like, especially on live. Um, is, uh, do you know Carlos Alvarez? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, think he's, he's uh, give me just a second. I think we're in the same group. Ah, because uh, he is awesome when it comes to uh, live tips. And, um, you know, you just being able to go on there, you don't have to have a podcast. You could, um, you could go live. It could be literally with your hand, like just a handheld phone for five minutes. It could be um, people talking about your products. Like it's, it's so easy to do and you get so much extra traffic. That's the creativity. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. So would you like to share some more tips about like what to do after Prime Day or during Prime Day? Like I talked about like how challenging it is to, to, to like work with budgets and PPC during Prime Day, especially like uh, be because of the 72 hour discrepancy when it comes to sales and attribution and so on. Like what's there that, that like you would suggest Amazon sellers to do during this period? Well, one of the things, um, and it's a little bit too late for Prime Day pre, pre Prime Day, um, but one of the things you could do for Black Friday is do a pre Black Friday sale, like one week before. Let everybody know that you're having a, um, a Black Friday sale, uh, but offer it a week ahead. And then moving up, you can you know give a different type of sale uh you can also provide like right after this where you get a lot of information um i try to go over to facebook and drive traffic over to my e-commerce site and let's say that the e-commerce site has the same stuff on amazon but a few other items i create added value so i'll go i'll create something that you can't get on amazon so it could be like, let's say that you sell shampoo and you want to give out a sample packet, like a nice little, not just a little packet, but, you know, a small bottle of conditioner, give people a chance to try it out. We can't get that on Amazon. You can only get it on your site. And then when they buy it, you can give them their Black Friday special code that they can go over to Amazon and buy a product for Black Friday. Now you've got two sales and you've got the email from the person um, that you can now legally, no problems, contact, retarget. <laughs> retarget. Yeah, and that works especially well if you've got a recurring product. So I sell soap. So I will spend up to $10 to get somebody to, my, my bar of soap costs $10. I'll spend $10 on advertising to get that first person. If I can convert a sale and get them to buy a product at $9.99, I'm all for it. So I'm losing, not losing, I'm breaking even, right? And anyways, at the end of the day, um, they're gonna use the soap and I'm confident that they're gonna buy another bar. And so if I can build their loyalty through that, then I'll lose the money up front. I got no problems. You know, I don't usually give away the product uh, on my website. I'll try to give away a soap dish with a bar of soap or a back scrubber or whatever it is. Um, but uh, the added value is usually something different that you can't get on Amazon. And that works really well. Yeah, that, that's, that's, not, 
That's like thinking long term. It's not like selling for the first stuff. Like I know that the guys that are selling supplements or want to try to sell supplements because like they heard that supplements is a really good niche and like you should definitely go there. And it's like absolute madness to be part of it. Like I'm like my perspective is like you should definitely do it if you're better and if you think that you're better than everybody else like do it yeah. but it's madness and like you need to know like what you're getting yourself into and like when it comes to that like when like most of the supplements have like really bad acres and like, that's i'm just giving an example and like there are many niches that have the same problem and but like as you said, like that subscription plan or like making people buy more because like your product is, uh, it, it can be consumed and you can, you can buy more like for yourself or, or some, for somebody else. Like that's the extra value. That's the extra thing that, that you're going to make apart from like selling one bar of soap. Like obviously everybody's going to use that soap and like buy another one. But like if you're confident that this is the highest quality possible, I'm probably going to buy another one. There is no logical reason why I would change it unless I'm convinced by somebody else that they have something better. And the other thing that you can do with this is now that they buy the soap and you send it out, you know it's not from Amazon, you can create something different. It could be a contest where like in the insert and it could be the insert on Amazon too. There's nothing wrong with this. But you could just say, uh, hey, tag me in Facebook or tag me in Instagram to join a contest and uh, be entered into a $100 or $250 um, you know, prize. And with that, you'll get a ton of images usually. Uh, you could get some videos. Uh, you'll get a, you know, people coming back. People will refer. And that's the, another whole other area that create a contest for referrals. And if people buy your product, you know, now it's a, this contest, you can win $500. Um, every, every time you refer five people, you get 25 points. And there's, there's all sorts of programs out there. Like I use a program, I think it's called Viper, uh, via V Y P R I think. And it just sets up contests, all sorts of different contests that, um, that you can use. And it's, it's really, um, just a cool item. And if you want to create sort of a, a viral content, make it interesting. Just make it cool for people that want to join. And this is where you can build your brand. So this is on another topic, but if you go out there and you have soap and the soap branding sucks, you're not going to get a lot for your soap. If the brand looks really great, okay, the, the person, the visitor on Amazon is going to take a look. What are they going to do? They're going to go to Google. And then they're going to check out Google to see if you're real. You got to build authority. How do you do it? You either have content out there that's on your website. You have press release. You have to do public relation. Whatever you do, you've got to build that trust. No trust, no sale. And you've got to be consistent. So if you decide, oh, I'm going to put all this money into my brand, and I'm going to have this really crappy website because I can't spend $500 or $1,000 or $2,500, um, and people go to it, you're going to come across as not being consistent. And that's the exact same thing with your social media. So a lot of people just cheapen out and they go to the cheapest possible process and they don't spend the money to get brand consistency. And that's a, that's a game changer. Now, if you're in retail arbitrage, whole different ball game. If you're a private label person trying to build your micro brand to beat out the other brands, you got to do it. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like one of the things it's like really similar topic to this one that you mentioned, like at this, uh, at, at one point, TikTok be became like a thing yeah. and for sellers started using it and like a whole bunch of seller, sellers started creating videos without knowing their customers and not knowing like who is using the platform. So I, I there is one thing about TikTok. I, I, I'm not really sure if you know about that. Like, TikTok is uh, like your feed is different uh, depending on the country where you where your SIM card is from. It's not about your phone. It's not about the um, the the the, the pr phone provider or anything. Like like I'm in Serbia and I have two phones and I have TikTok on both of them. 
And I'm I'm testing like what I'm going to get. In one, I have Serbian SIM card, and in the other one, I have a US SIM card, and they're both postpaid. And I have completely different feeds, like completely. Like for, on Serbian phone, I'm getting Serbian feeds, and since I bought um, the other SIM card in, in US, I'm getting pretty local, like for the state where I bought uh, bought the, the SIM card. And like that, that, that's insane thing to know. And like it's it's like completely crazy. Like when you go to like settings and you choose like which content you want to see, like filter the language or filter the the country or so on, it doesn't work like at all. And like I saw a lot of Amazon sellers that I already know that they're big and they just wanted to push to a new channel, like going really serious with their videos, like. Don't get me wrong, videos are really great, but they're displayed to the wrong audience. Like uh, yeah. they're displayed to young people, and like you're giving some some information that is like really in-depth in detail, like how something works. Like these guys don't want to see that, you know, like yeah. Really quick, fast. Yeah. So let's see your TikTok dance. No, uh, I would skip that part. I would skip that part. Like, you know, I have like two or three videos total. You know, Yana. So, yeah, like, yeah. We, were in, you, we were in quarantine for 28 days in Belgrade. Like, it was so boring. Like, you cannot imagine. Like, apart from work, like, we did so many things for work. Like, just because we didn't have anything else to do. Like, yeah. obviously, I'm in the office more or less all the time. But, like, this was like a whole new level of like working. And like there, there was Tiger King at that point on Netflix, and yeah. Yana insisted on like, um, like getting a makeup to become like that that main character from from the show, like that yeah. guy. I was like, this, this is insane. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was I was his boyfriend with 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 like tattoos and all 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 over his face without teeth and everything. So she was a guy with mus like mustache and like. Um, some wig and like that yeah kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and 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 like that kind of videos like we have on tiktok so just to let you know if you ever decide to to follow me i i post like once a year and it's like really bad <laughs> <laughs> i gotta see that picture though <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can share it not on the stream. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that, that that's that's what we have there. Yeah. <laughs> like, like good. <laughs> An awkward silence starts. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking about that picture. So we, that's another thing that you you brought up was demographic. So if you are targeting the wrong demographic, it's um you, you're just wasting your money. And I guess that's the same with PPC. You know, if you don't know who you're targeting, you're just throwing away. Or if you're if you're um, using a browsing keyword, so I sell bully sticks, you know, dog treats or dog chews, I'll just blow my money. I'll waste it. I won't get any sales. Um, so, you, you know, you have to know your audience. And, yeah. Um, yeah, that goes a long way. So do your research. like, And that's even competitive analysis. So find out who your competitors are, see what they're um, doing right, see what they're doing wrong and uh, take advantage of it. You know, come up with something a little bit different. Yeah, so let's say that I'm completely new to the field. Yep. Like, and all of a sudden I have um, brand registry 2.0 and I have everything there and I want to do that kind of research. Like. If he asks me, like, or she, like, the, the person that is going to sell and wants to do a research, I would definitely recommend using um, brand analytics and to do a lot of A-B tests if they have, like, Shopify store, like, to, to check Google Analytics, to check Facebook ads, to see, like, from all different perspectives, to see, like, what's their targeted audience to, like, get to know to the customer. Would you do the same way or like do you suggest something different? Yeah, well, first of all, uh, I'll take a look at, at a, the page. Like I'll, I'll take a look at most of the um, competitors. I'll also go off of Amazon to see what 
you know the the other competitors maybe with Shopify or other types of platforms are using. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't do, and this is even with your own product, um, you have to experience the customer. Um, I'll call it customer experience. I hate the word customer journey, um, but you have to experience it. So buy your product, buy your competitor's product, um, see how it arrives, see what follow-up emails, if any, uh, come in, and you can see how your, your competitors are um, working, right? Uh, and then as the product comes in, let's say it's my soap competitors. How do the bars of soap come in? How do they, how are they packaged? Is there an outer package? Is there any, um, are there any inserts? What are they doing that's slightly different? And some of the things I found was um, like th the packaging, it means everything. Um, and then when you open it, uh, it was the experience of the scent of the smell. Forget mm -hmm. everything else. If you didn't have this incredible scent, then it would be nothing. So how do we do this? We cut a window out so the scent would, would come through. And then we had an envelope where we showed um, uh, our soap was around the world and it was helping third world um, uh, countries um, with clean water. So we'd have a little blurb on, on it with uh, you know a woman and child with their bar of soap and having clean water for the first time. Uh, so these are all different things that you can pick up from your competitors. Like how, what are they doing? How are they doing it? Um, and what are they doing absolutely wrong or what are they doing absolutely right? Um, is there any room of improvements for that? So that's physical. And then it could be little things. Like, you know, I, I talked years ago about handwritten notes in there, you know, generic handwritten notes that can go out. But what else can you put in there? Um, are there any other things? Is there that loyalty program I was talking about? Is the contest? Um, is there the way that you open up the package? So let me see. You know, when you have a bar of soap, you can open it up at the top, right? And you pull it okay. out. Yeah. It's like a regular, it's called a tuck box. So you just pull it out. Um, what about like unveiling it? So it opens this way and there's a message on the inside of the box. Now, when you unveil it and you open it up, there's a message. The customer experience is a bit longer. The more scent personal. comes out. It's much more personal. And you can put, like I call it um, a spot imprint of, a, of just a welcome message or, you know, um, number one, uh, you know, wash your hands or, you know, whatever. And then at the, the, the third or fourth point is enjoy, you know, something that's just a little bit different than everybody else. Everybody else has got a tuck box. Now you've got a box that's a little bit different. And like even when you have, like we have the one pack, three pack, five pack, when you do have the three pack, it could it, it is a shipping box. So you can ship it out direct. Um, it says another great delivery from. So you're advertising, you know, very inexpensively and you're not ho uh, waiting for Amazon to slap some stupid label on it, wrap it in bubble pack and it comes really ugly, it's already there for the person to look at, package as a gift for whoever. Yeah, and especially with like picking like the right word, as, as you said, like another delivery. Yeah, yeah. You know, just, just little things can make a big difference. And people not only, okay, for example, in, in the three pack or the five pack, you can suggest what an incredible gift for Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day. Forget chocolates, forget flowers, give the gift, you know, and then relax, recover, rejuvenate, all this stuff. Um, you know, there's, there's all sorts of ways that you can tell somebody that this is a great gift. Not only, you know, hey, you bought it on Prime Day for, you know, 10% off or 20% off. Okay, now remember to give this as a gift to somebody for your next Prime Day or whatever. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Like that's like fine tuning and making the difference that yeah. people need to see. Like that, like why why are you better than the others? Right. Definitely. And the other part to this is, uh, I mean, I I don't like dealing with bottom dwellers. So if that soap is selling for three ninety nine, 
um, I want to sell my soap for 10 or 14, you know, and how do you do that? You have to, you have to think outside of the box. You have to have excellent pictures. You have to have great copy uh, and packaging has got to be awesome. But uh, then you can be way more profitable, get way more sales, and you don't have to work on product cannibalization. You know, it's more like profit cannibalization. Now let everybody else fight it out at the bottom. It makes a lot of sense. Definitely. And like one of the things that you can definitely do when you have packaging, obviously with soap, it's going to be problematic, but like some other stuff, like you can, you mentioned like samples. Like you can place samples in, in, in the package as well. It's not going to make a huge difference. And I'm pretty sure it's, I, I like, I'm pretty sure that you know better than I, uh, than I do if it's against terms of service or not, but I'm pretty sure that you can get through with like some small extra package inside of the main package. No problem. That shouldn't be an issue at all. All you're doing, especially it, let's say it's coming out of Amazon. You're not taking them away from Amazon. You're not linking anywhere. All you're doing is giving a product that is available like on Amazon. It, it doesn't even have to. What's in that package, if it's over at your website, if they were like, you know how they've got these 10,000 people out there now buying packages to make sure mm -hmm. that they're all kosher. Well, if you send a package that has another package inside of it with a sample, the only thing they're looking for is, are you sending that out the same way on Walmart or on your own Shopify store. If this is geared only to Amazon, that you're putting this sample in there to drive them over to your it's website. Like extra value. Then you've got a problem. So is if, if you're shipping out, like if somebody puts an order for a product on Shopify, Walmart, Amazon, and they all come in and they all have a sample, no problem. And, and I shouldn't even say sample. If they have something in those products that lead you away from Amazon, as long as all three have the same stuff in it, then it's not a problem because Amazon isn't a monopoly. If you have only on Amazon's product that, oh, go over to this website, then you, you, you might have a slight problem because you're leading people trying to get them over to your website and it's unique to Amazon and not Walmart and not um, Shopify. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, cool. so hope I didn't bore you on that one. <laughs> no, you no, know, uh, definitely, definitely you didn't. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I learned a lot about soap packaging to be honest. There, there like, you go. No, no, like like when they go to conferences and all that, like you don't expect to 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 like get your business like on a plate, but this kind of stuff is really important to get. It's important to get like like to plant a seed of idea in your head, like what you need to do, and like after like listening an hour of talk and like be like, okay, I'm just like gonna go back to the office or home or wherever and i'm going to rethink what i'm doing and like to try to make it better and that that's basically the whole point of it right yeah with new sellers sometimes the uh the process it gets foggy because there's just so much information coming in and and really all you're doing is you want to make sure that the image is better or as good as the competitors the titles are engaging and that you're not keyword stuffing, that the key uh, that the bullet points can read well. I mean, all the other stuff. I mean, there is relevance to everything, but all you're doing is marketing a product, and it's marketing a product. If if it's you know if if you don't have to do a million things, you can just stay, stand your ground, get it up, get it working. What you'll see is the first product you're gonna what I call you know pay your tax. You're going to make wrong mis mistakes. You're not going to understand about PBC. You're not going to understand. You'll get that maybe the second time. You know, you'll understand that you have to go there, but don't freak out. You know, and and what I wouldn't do for your first um, product is go out there and spend. You know, buy five thousand of something that's fifty dollars a pop. You know, get a taste for it. You know, don't spend a ton. Get your first. Uh, product out there, get it moving, see what went right, went wrong. If it is a home run, hey, perfect. It's great. But um, it, it is, um, 
it's a test of time. I mean, you just have to, and you, you can't do everything yourself, right? Like, yeah, definitely. If, if you're talking to somebody about PPC, you know, you probably want them to definitely understand it, but okay, if that's my weakness and I've never done PPC before, why am I trying to do it? You know, unless, you know, there's a, a program or you know something that they could work with that's going to give them some training to understand. Understanding PPC and doing it, two different things. Same thing with, you know, branding. You know, okay, you want to create your own logo. You want to go and get pay for somebody five bucks, go for it. But if you're building a brand and you want to add an extra zero when you try to sell it, spend the hundred bucks or 200 bucks or whatever it is on the logo. Yeah, definitely. It, it, it takes extra stuff to, 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 to make more. Yeah. So since we're like 45 minutes into this talk, uh, like I, there's only one more thing that I would like to ask you about. Like, I know that you do some, some videos and there is something called lunch with norm. Like, can, can you tell, uh, to our listeners, what's that about? Like how sure. they, they can find you and like, what's the reason why they want to, to listen to it? Like what's the value that, that you provide there? Okay. So there's, there's two podcasts. So okay. one is, I know this guy and it's not an Amazon podcast at all. It's about really interesting people. And I talk to them about sort of their ups, their downs, everything in between. Um, we work on their failures. So what did it take? How bad did you have to fail to succeed? And um, so that's one podcast. The other one, which is e-com based, so it's online selling. Yeah. Uh, it's called Lunch with Norm. It's every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's a podcast. You can pick it up anywhere. But we also um, publish whole episodes and clips and content on Facebook and on YouTube. It's just under Norm Farrar. Um, and best way to get a hold of me is probably norm at amz like amazon amz.club not com dot club okay that, that, that's a cool domain <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for your time today and sorry again for all of the troubles when, when it comes to scheduling this call and and i'm pretty sure that that listeners got like really good value from it and like we're going to share it further if you don't mind hey, no problem so, at all <laughs> thank you so much and and have a great rest of the day all right, and good luck with your 48. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.